Thanks again for tuning into Moonshine Gaming. Today we're going to be discussing the top 10 rarest and most expensive Super Nintendo games. Now as per usual, we have a few parameters we're going to be following for this list. We won't be including any case variants, homebrews, pack-in games, which means the Exertainment Mountain Bike Rally cartridge will not be included, and also we won't be including competition cartridges. So the Power Fest, Campus Challenge, Star Fox Super Weekend, and DK Blockbuster competition cartridge will not be included in this list. We'll be doing cartridge only prices for this list, and we will be using North American pricing. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we've got Evo Search for Eden. This is a side-scrolling action game that was released in 1993. Spanning a period of over a billion years, the game's story involves Gaia, daughter of the sun and mystical embodiment of the earth, guiding the player through five distinct geological periods of the planet's history. Beginning the game as a fish, the player must travel across the planet, defeating enemies and gaining strength to evolve into more powerful and complex organisms before eventually earning a chance to enter the paradise realm of Eden, becoming Gaia's immortal partner. Evo has incredible graphics with vibrant colors, solid controls, and a good variety of gameplay mechanics. The only downside to the game is its mediocre sound design, and sometimes the game can feel extremely relentless when it comes to difficulty. Getting stunlocked by bosses can sometimes make the game feel almost impossible to progress. Evo has to be one of the most original SNES games, and if you're an RPG fan, then you'll find this game appealing, and also if you like action games, then you'll enjoy this to the core. Although, you'll have to prepare for a challenge, as this game has some of the hardest bosses on the Super Nintendo. The unique features will allow you to have lots of different combinations to create some hilarious looking creatures and also build a killing machine that will rise as the dominant creature. This game has a little bit of something for everyone and will appeal to many different types of gamers with its unique gameplay. This game's worth $346. Next up we've got Metal Warriors. This is a side-scrolling action, platform, run-and-gun game that was released in 1995. In the game, the player assumes the role of Lieutenant Stone from the titular Freedom Fighting Group in order to complete a series of nine missions, during which you are attempting to overthrow the Dark Axis forces led by dictator Venkar Amon and end the three-year war against Earth. During gameplay, the players are able to pilot six different types of assault suits each one having their own melee weapons and featuring a distinctive mechanic from one another. The sound in this game is incredible. It features futuristic effects and a rotating track list of a mix of techno and rock. The gameplay is also really fun and controls are responsive. It's not often that you can notice the physics in games from this era, but Metal Warriors, you can tell the developers put a lot of work into the physics. Side note, a lot of people mistakenly think this game is actually a direct sequel to the game Cybernator when it's not. With the similar graphics and style, as well as both games being published by Konami, it's easy to see why people make this mistake. Metal Warriors is a wonderful game to play by yourself or with friends. The game is relatively difficult, but as we know, many games from this era are. The music and graphics are first rate, and the gameplay will not let you down. This is one of those games that often gets overlooked by the flashier 16-bit action games like Contra 3, but Metal Warriors is a must-play for people interested in the action-slash-mech genre. This game's worth $362. Next up, we've got Mega Man X3. This is a side-scrolling action platforming game released in 1995. Mega Man X3 follows the tradition of both the original Mega Man series and the Mega Man X series with his gameplay. The player traverses a series of 8 stages in any order while gaining various power-ups and taking the special weapon of each stage's end boss. Mega Man X3 is the first game in the series in which Zero is a playable character and equipped with a laser sword. <laughs> The level design remains challenging and fun, and most of the levels really complement the wall jumping mechanic that's implemented into the Mega Man X series. Although the graphics and audio are amazing, they feel unchanged for Mega Man X2 with no noticeable improvements. 
Mega Man X3 is all too familiar of a sequel for it to match the greatness of Mega Man X or X2, but it's still replicating two exceptional games. The Mega Man formula is timeless and the aesthetics have aged well. So even a lesser entry that follows the series rulebook will still end up better than many of their contemporaries. Mega Man X3 may be the point where the X series started to feel less special, but I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't still a ton of fun. This game's worth $378. Next up, we've got Earthbound. This is an RPG that was released in 1995. Earthbound takes place right after the events of Mother in the fictional country of Eagle Land, a parody of the United States. The player starts as a young boy named Ness as he investigates a nearby meteorite crash with his neighbor Pokey in search of his neighbor's brother Picky. They find that an alien force, Gigas, has enveloped and consumed the world in hatred and consequently turned animals, humans, and objects into malicious creatures. A small bee-like creature from the future instructs Ness to collect melodies in a soundstone from eight sanctuaries to preemptively stop the force, but is killed shortly thereafter when Pokey and Picky's mother mistakes the bee as a pest. The biggest appeal in this game is its story which has you encountering hilarious things and people regularly, as well as getting mixed up in some unique situations. The sound design is great with a combination of regular and outer-worldly sound effects and music tracks. At first you may think the graphics are a bit underwhelming, but there is sort of a charm to the simplicity of the art style and it complements the quirky storyline quite well. There's a lot of game here to keep you occupied with events unfolding at a relaxed pace as you move from one event in search of the next that will keep you laughing and engaged all the way to the end credits. This game's worth $407. Next up we've got Castlevania Dracula X. This is a side-scrolling action platforming game released in 1995. In the game you take control of Richter Belmont and you must work your way through nine stages with four alternate routes as he searches for his kidnapped beloved Annette and ultimately confronts Dracula in his castle. Richter makes use of a whip as his main weapon and one of six sub-weapons, an axe, a dagger, holy water, a grimoire, a pocket watch, and a cross. While exploring the castle, Richter can rescue four maidens, including his distant relative, Maria. While the plot is similar to Rondo of Blood, which is a Japanese game released for the PC engine, and it uses many of that game's graphics, it features a different art style, redesigned levels, and altered gameplay elements, such as having only two alternate levels and Maria as an NPC. The controls of Dracula X can be very frustrating. When jumping, it feels weighty, and Richter is restricted when airborne. Also, the whip attacks are limited to horizontal attacks only for some reason. The gameplay can also feel slightly delayed and unresponsive at times, and getting stunlocked by enemies is a regular occurrence. The level design isn't great either. The game almost feels like a Castlevania game on the NES with upgraded graphics. Cheap deaths, clunky mechanics, and high difficulty combine to make for more hair-pulling moments than most would care to endure. If you consider yourself a huge fan of the franchise, then you'll probably want to form your own opinion of Dracula X, and I don't think my warnings would do much to sway your opinion anyways. Everyone else, however, would be better off checking out Super Castlevania 4 instead. This game's worth $435. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to hit that like button. Next up, we've got Harvest Moon. This is a farm simulation role-playing game released in 1997. The game follows a young man charged with maintaining the farm that he inherits from his grandfather. The primary objective is to restore and maintain a farm that has fallen into disrepair. The player decides how to allocate time between daily tasks such as clearing land, planting crops, selling harvests, raising livestock, attending festivals, building relationships with villagers, and foraging. When it comes to relationships in Harvest Moon, you win their heart by poking around their houses and reading their diaries, which is kind of creepy when you think about it. Once you've charmed the woman of your choice and made her fall in love with you, you can buy a blue feather to propose to her. And if you're lucky and she accepts, you'll get better meals at home and have babies to secure the future of your little homestead. Although Romance of Three Kingdoms was the first game to introduce farming elements into a video game, Harvest Moon was the first farming simulation game, and it kicked off the craze of these style of RPGs, inspiring future games such as Minecraft, 
Stardew Valley, and Animal Crossing. Working through seasons, planting goods, going to festivals, and getting married in search of a cool ending. To some, Harvest Moon will sound pointless, but it's a game that is greater than the sum of its parts and very addictive once you get started. This is a shining example of the RPG genre, and at the time of release, it was unique and original. Definitely worth checking out. This game's worth $436. Next up, we've got Final Fight Guy. This was a side-scrolling beat-em-up game released in 1994. The game is set in the fictional city on the Atlantic coast in the United States named Metro City. The city's crime rates used to be off the charts, but since the election of pro wrestler turned politician Mike Hager as the new mayor, Metro City was changed and cleaned up drastically. Although he had cleaned up the streets, there still was a gang wreaking havoc named the Mad Gear Gang. Mad Gear kidnapped the mayor's daughter Jessica, and once Hager found out about his daughter's abduction, he became furious and decided to take his fight against Mad Gear to a personal level. Seeking additional manpower, Hager recruits Guy, a ninja in training. You can choose to play as Guy or Hager. This game is almost a complete replica of the original Final Fight release for Super Nintendo, with two small changes. Firstly, they replaced playable character Cody with Guy in Final Fight Guy, and they also included the elevator stage that they originally removed in Final Fight. With this game coming out nearly three years after Final Fight, you would expect some upgrades, but sadly, there was no noticeable changes. It seems like Capcom was lazy with this release and they were just looking for a money grab. The game was initially only released as a blockbuster rental only game, but was later given a very limited release in stores. This is probably one of the reasons why the game has become increasingly rare and expensive. This game's worth $509. Next up, we've got Pocky and Rocky 2. This is a shoot 'em up game that was released in 1994. The game's plot revolves around a kidnapped princess abducted by demons led by bad guy Impy, and it's up to you and your partner to save the princess. The game is played in a top-down view, featuring many elements from classic shoot 'em up games, but giving the player eight directional movement. Player one controls the main protagonist, Pocky, who attacks by throwing cards. Pocky can pick up items to improve her attack power and new clothes to protect herself from damage, as well as throw Player 2's character and use magic. Player 2 assumes a supporting role as one of Pocky's friends, each possessing a unique attack and unlimited lives. If there's no second player, the supporting character will be CPU controlled. The game is debatably one of the best action games for the Super Nintendo, with incredible graphics, great sound design, solid controls, interesting game mechanics, and challenging bosses. There were a few changes from its predecessor, Pocky and Rocky, one of which allows the second player to choose between multiple characters with different abilities. They also replaced the health bar with an armor system, which allows you to be hit between two to four times before death. Pocky and Rocky 2 is everything you expect from a sequel and is a great game. While it may be a bit similar to its predecessor, there are enough new mechanics to still make it a new experience. Unfortunately, it still remains expensive to this day, but if you find it for a decent price, it's definitely worth picking up. This game's worth $734. Next up, we've got Arrow Fighters. This is a vertical scrolling shooter released in 1994. The game was originally an arcade game that was released in 1992 and was soon after ported to the Famicom and Super Nintendo. It was a spiritual successor to the game Turbo Force. Although there's no real story, there are small cutscenes between stages where the player's choice of pilot receives new orders. Depending on which country you select at the beginning of the game will determine the stages you will start on. As the stage is completed, the game will go to a cutscene with a kind of Google Earth looking model and a large scale explosion on the map that will indicate the stage has been completed. The best way to describe Arrow Fighters is that it's solid. It doesn't try to be innovative with unique scoring system or gameplay mechanics. It moves at a brisk pace, has solid action, but is never so frantic that it's overwhelming. Also, with each character playing differently, there's a ton of replayability in this game. Arrow Fighters does exactly what it's set out to do, nails the fundamentals and nothing more. I respect a game that knows what it wants to be. I don't think I would recommend it over the better Super Nintendo shooters out there, but it doesn't make a bad second choice. 
This game is worth $1,073. Next up, number one, Hagane The Final Conflict. This is an action platforming game that was released in 1995. In the game, the Koma clan attacks the Fuma clan and steals the Holy Grail, and only one ninja survives. The player takes control of this ninja that's transformed into a cyborg and is tasked with retrieving the Holy Grail and saving the world. Hagane's play control is flawless. Some of the hero's moves require a fair amount of practice and precision from the player, especially the horizontal jump, but controls always feel tight and responsive. This is definitely a hard game and doesn't have a continue function, which makes it even more difficult. Bosses require memorization and strategy to beat, and the last stage has some tricky platforming. It was especially gratifying to learn a boss well enough to use Hagane's super moves, which as stated before require precision and timing, and you were able to obliterate the bosses in just a couple hits with these special moves. The music and sound effects are decent, but nothing special. Innovation is not the key to Hagane's success as a game, instead Hagane's quality is derived from how masterfully the development team put together tried and true platforming action elements to create a solid title. Despite its flaws, this title delivers a fun and satisfying experience. Just be warned, the game isn't very long and has little replay value. This game's worth $1,268. And that's going to do it for the video. We hope you enjoyed the top 10 rarest and most expensive Super Nintendo games. And don't forget to subscribe to Moonshine Gaming for lots of awesome video game content. We'll see you next time. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, you might like these.